All right, I've got a couple of jobs to do here on the front. I'm going to pull off and rebuild both brake calipers. And I'm also going to install a Racetech fork kit here into the forks. Haven't done this before, so uh, we'll see how that goes. Just like that. Good, took me an opportunity to clean that up. Need to figure out if this is going to be the right thing to get in there. Yep. Easy. Heaps of room. Yeah, even that fits. Just my normal one. This is a race tech one. There are other kinds around. And uh, what they do is over small bumps, the fork oil goes through these holes here, just those four little holes. Um, and that provides a certain amount of damping. As you uh, go over bigger and bigger bumps, or as the bump gets stronger and stronger, this, um, this part here will be pushed upwards. So that gets pushed up because there's too much oil going through the hole. So it actually lifts this thing off the base. And at that point, the oil comes up and around, comes out these three slots around the side, comes around it. And at what point that happens, of course, is determined by the strength of this spring here and how far it's wound in. There's, the kits come with different springs like this, they're colored. Um, of course, the kit also comes with springs that are a lot bigger. I'll show you what the originals are. That's an original. This is the new one. Uh, this is in a tube to stop it from buckling inside the uh, fork leg. These are so big they don't need that. The leg is the tube. There's also some other bits in the kit here. There's a spacer here with a with like a the piston ring around it, a nylon one, some extra washers. You're going to need seals for the forks. I guess I'll just quickly talk about the tools you're going to need. I've got uh, these for circlips. There's one outer and there's one inner to remove. A rattle gun of some sort. Uh, just because what you're trying to do is undo a you need a uh, socket for the nuts at the top of the fork. Just a nice big one, whatever fits yours. This one here, out of my set, this was the best fit. One and three sixteenths. I didn't seem to have a metric one that fit, so uh, that one fit nicely though. Came straight off as well, which was nice. And what else do you need? Gosh, almost nothing. Almost nothing. So let's uh, go over to the bike and have a quick look what I did. Uh, because uh, you can't get a good grip on this thing necessarily, you might need a stronger grip than you realize. You might. Uh, what I did was I took this drift, put it through the brake bracket hole, and then just held on to that. Um, Plenty of force in that. In the end, it just popped off straight away, but that gives you a good hold. Uh, what else? Put a tray underneath, of course. You could drain the fork oil first. Doesn't really matter. It's not that much that comes out. A couple hundred mil. Easy. <laughs> and at this point, Give it all a tug. There we go. See, almost nothing came out right there. Very straightforward. You need three hands. That one's a lot easier. A lot easier. No problem. And at that point, this one just comes off like that. 
Now, there's another thing that one has to do, and this is sort of the harder part of the whole process. There's a ball bearing in there, quite a large ball sitting there, and this piece here is press fit on there. You gotta fasten all this in your vise in a way that you're not gonna damage it, and then use some grips to pull this off. Uh, in fact, Racetech's own site has a section where they talk about the 38 millimeter Masoki, and they show how to do that. And then it will look like this. That's where the bearing sat, and that piece was press fit over here. Okay, at the other end of this tube are holes. The original one has one cross hole like that, and they tell you to drill, they actually tell you to drill two more, one centimeter, uh, one centimeter apart. Uh, this has one more. Now, Brooke prepared these for me so I could keep these original and not damage them, which was very kind and very useful. I need to get these seals out. There's two seals in them. And there's a circlip. It's like a piston ring. It doesn't have little holes in it, but there's a little notch in the end for pulling it out. And then around. Yep. Thought I'd try the uh, dual screwdriver method. Let's see what we can do. Oh, oh yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. Thought it was going to be very tight there for a second, and then it popped. So let's try that again. It's not a great system. Oh yes, there we go. It is a great system. So first I'll go in with the... Just letting it dribble into the tray down there. Scrunch up one. There's the wet one. And another. Follow it down. Sparkling. Nice. Good. Now let's try and do it here. So I'm going to cut one like that, just for no reason other than practice. So on the other, it's going to be like that. It's a bit crappy to get into it. It's a bit more. It cleans it up real nice. I'm porting the forks. Very nice. That's how we'll do it. Yep. I wonder if I should use one of the old ones just to get it started. Pop it on top, same way. My socket on there. Yes, it's going in just fine. That one.
I wiped it up too good. I haven't put any pressure on that other than through another ring. Now that side's going to go in and this that side's going to go in and then this side I'm going to pop in. Very good. Okay, all that happens is all this stuff here just gets shoved up there. Like that. Grease here. Yep, that's going to hold. It's got the uh, aluminium washer on it. That's 20. Twenty four. That'll do. Right there. Doesn't look thick enough to lubricate uh, all that junk in the fork. Brooke reckon reckoned you had to do this quite a few times. I might have to even go away and do something else. Do this a little bit more and then I'll do the other side. So I'm gonna pour I'm gonna pour like 50 ml extra in each. From what I'm understanding and seeing in the uh, construction of these, it doesn't actually matter how much is in there, so long as it's covered, and of course isn't all the way to the top, because you've got to have the air. Seems like the obvious thing is to give it 300. That should be well covered. And pushing down from there, I've got to push it down about 22 and I can just get on there, about there, and start winding it. Okay. That being 108 plus 22. Yes, it was 130. Take it back from about that. Well, 130 and uh, 130.2 or something like that. Got a nice clean tube, all smoothed off. It may still need to be adjusted. Gonna put it down here onto that washer. it. Take a little bit off the end of these um, spacers here that I made for the Racetech springs. Uh, I put it together with about that much preload. I think it was about 30, 35 or 33 or something like that. 130. Let's go 110. And I 
have that at 50. There we go. 50 it is. So the next step with that loose, I can see a gap between the leg and the washer that's up against the speedo drive. Oh yeah, when you do up that bolt, make sure your speedo drive is coming out at the correct angle, the most uh, suitable angle, because it can come out in any direction, but once you lock that up tight, it's fixed. Okay, so with that done, now I'm going to bounce the forks so that this leg, this leg here, which I can move outwards and I can push inwards, that, I just want it to relax and just sit in one position. So that's what I'm going to do. Good. sure I'd notice a difference before I did the work a few months ago I sort of uh, took some rides on bumpy roads and these regular roads I'm on and I tried to get the feel exactly of what the forks felt like so that maybe I could compare and uh, I think it actually worked out I was able to when I took the bike on its first ride yesterday at first I didn't notice anything but then, quite quickly, I did. Once I thought about it, so what I wanted to do was talk about the forks. I felt like the fork wasn't working. It seemed stiff, like it was like I couldn't feel any movement. I kept looking over down at the fork to see if it was moving or not. And it just felt like there wasn't movement happening. When I'd stop and use the brake on it, you know, I could see fairly normal movement, it seemed. Uh, but while riding, it didn't seem to have movement. I couldn't really feel it. Halfway through the ride, I realized that, oh, <laughs> it's working. What it was doing was dealing with the finer bumps without transmitting them through to me. That's what it was doing. I wasn't feeling the road, you know, the, the, every little pebble on the road wasn't coming through the forks and I, I wasn't feeling it. So it actually felt good and I realized, oh, it's actually working. That's what it's doing. It's just working much, much better for the fine stuff. And so I rode around, looked at bumps, tried to observe it. And yes, it's definitely uh, much finer on the uh, fine bumps, much smoother, just sort of you don't feel them. And it makes it feel like it's not doing anything, but it is doing something. It's doing more than the old forks. The old forks were, you know, they were juddery, rattly. <laughs> um, I've never ridden one of these with the original rear shocks, but I understand they were like that as well. So very happy with that at this point. Um, 